Welcome to part three of working on the Strat. Okay, so at the end of the second part of the video, I had just finished dabbing some flat black paint in this guy. It's been, I don't know, five, ten minutes, something like that. So time for the great unveiling. Let's see what happens here. Don't know if I can do this one-handed or not, but okay. That's more or less everything off the back half. How do we turn up? There's a trick to getting this thing to focus. Maybe give it something to focus on. Zoom, maybe. Um, I don't really know how to work this thing. Oh, that's brightness level. We don't care about brightness. Zoom. There you go. Zoom and focus. Nope. All right. Maybe I just have to hold it still for a minute. It's not going to behave. Okay, so this camera sucks. I guess I'm just going to have to take my word for it. Let's see here. Get the 4X vision going here like Superman. What do we got? Hmm. How about some light on the situation? This thing needs batteries. What do we got? Okay. That stuff is silver. And it's actually reflecting. <laughs> yeah, check this out. I don't know if the camera... Yeah, okay, yeah, see? My silver lock nut is now black on the bottom part and blue on the top part because it's all reflecting what's on the other side. So, yeah, no paint there. No paint there. It looks good. It looks good. Now the bottom of the slot. Let me get all the extra light off it. Okay, so yeah. Yeah, it's still got a little bit of gloss to it. I might be able to hit up with a little bit more and take some of that sheen out, especially at the edges. Let me do that. I'll be right back. Okay, got the uh, nut masked off again. Going to get some more paint going. I think I might like try something else in order to flood that a little bit more with the flat black. Be right back. Okay, so here's the plan. As you saw before, I guess that was in the last video, um, the Q-tip's too wide to fit in that slot. But, if I take this thing, this one here, I pulled the cotton head basically all the way up off the end of the stick almost and yeah the end of the stick is like right about where the end of my finger is and all that is just kind of cotton brush or wick or whatever you want to call it so the plan is I'm going to take this guy here I gotta be careful how I'm holding the phone once again yeah, I'm going to take this guy here I'm just going to squirt black straight on it and I should be able to come in with it and if the stick will cooperate yeah yeah it's getting down in there so I should be able to dab a fair amount of good paint down in there it'll get a little stiffer once it gets some paint on it so but it's long enough to reach I might have to squeeze and form a little bit my fingers might get a bit messy but I think I can get in there or I might have to like uh, pull um pull this out a little bit in order to get a little feathered edge more of a real paintbrush like I said with those other little spongy paintbrush mini things I was using before I was really aiming more for just like a traditional you know testers model airplane paint kind of a paintbrush so that would be more or less perfect for this job. 
but don't I don't happen to have any around so I'm gonna be doing what I can with a q-tip otherwise I'm thinking just take a bit of paper and fold it in half and dip it in some paint and run it back and forth in there so I'll be back in a sec okay here we go a little paint Try to get a fair amount here. Okay. Uh, camera doesn't pick it up well, but yeah, there's a fair amount of paint there in the middle. This thing is pretty saturated. All right, let's see what happens here. I'm just gonna that's the idea yeah okay see how that's really starting to get in there now that's what we want and once again the stick seems to be too big to actually fit down in there so I gotta like yeah there we go you get the end of the thing down in there and kind of push and it'll squeeze out a bunch of paint down into it but it's still a little big let me try something else okay so i just tore the corner off and made a little painting tool let's see what this does hopefully this paint hasn't dried up too much Get the old 4x specs on yeah i need more paint on this thing hold on a sec okay now what you got for me Okay, that's hitting the bottom pretty good. And it should probably hit this back side pretty good too. So, yeah. Definitely works a lot better. There you go. All right, so. So, okay, time to let it dry. I'm going to pause and, I don't know, do something and wait about, yeah, this will dry within five or ten minutes, and then I'll see how it looks. If it's still looking kind of glossy, then, I don't know, maybe try a third coat and see if I can dull it down a little bit more. Basically, the duller and flatter I can get it and darker the less noticeable it should be. I mean, I don't want to go too, too dark, but then again, it's going to have chrome here, and it's going to have chrome right there, so. Well, no, it doesn't have chrome there. What it is is I've got dark red here, which is pretty darn dark, but it's not black, 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 super, super black, right? It's not like, you know, pitch. So, if this was like pitch, which, I mean, true pitch is a uh, very difficult to achieve color, actually. I mean, it's way darker than ebony. But yeah, if this was pitch, the thing would it'd stand out almost as much as if it were a white line or something. So, yeah, I want to get it dark. I don't want to get it, and I want to get it flat. I don't want to get it in just insanely pitch black, though, because that would actually make it contrast too much with this red that's under this tape here so yeah let that dry see what it looks like after it's uh dried out to a flat and we'll be back come on phone pause just right quick i wanted to 
catch a shot of this. You can see, if I can get the camera angle right, you can see where the fretboard is starting to dry out. Like dry, 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 less dry, and still wet over on this side. But yeah, it is actually, and see, I haven't put any, I haven't wiped it down, I'm not using any heat or anything. It's not hot in here at all. It's so cold I actually closed the doors and I'm wearing a jacket. It's, you know, maybe 70 degrees in here. Um, it's always like 10 degrees colder in the woods. So. so yeah, looking pretty. And yeah, this stuff does soak in. So, you know, it's not going to look like that forever. And here, let me show you just right quick and I can just come back and hit it with that sponge again don't even have to put any oil on it just hit it with the sponge and it'll bring it back to where we're at so here I'll just show you right quick on one of them what it looks like when it's done more or less so it's going to be all oiled up and all the excess is going to be wiped off like that, and then you just want to buff it real good. And this has been very finely sanded, probably 2000, something like that. And you get a nice little satin thing going on. Right there. And that is just oil treated wood with uh, water based keto wood dye under it on rose wood. And it's uh, silky smooth. Silky smooth. So, here, let me get this thing to focus. Okay. Yeah, so that's what you get as a result. Let me back up, give you an idea. So yeah, the whole fretboard's going to look like that. It's got a nice sheen to it. And do a couple more. Just right quick. I won't really bother buffing them up, but... So you can sort of see the effect. Then I'll go back and put some more oil back on and let it finish soaking. And this one might get, you know, one more after this, but more tissue. When it comes to finishing guitars, uh, this stuff, if you buy it in bulk, TP basically, industrial, like you'd get for a gas station or whatever, a business. You can get them in like cases of 80 rolls off Amazon real cheap. And it works for everything except for except for putting dye on wood. They just they crumble too much. And they're paper towels. These are actually softer than cheap paper towels and less expensive. So so okay, it's all rubbed off more or less. I'm not really going to worry about burnishing too much, but burnishing will bring a bit more luster to it. As you can see, each of these is starting to reflect a little bit more light as I start giving it the old elbow grease. Because the oil actually makes for a fair polish. And so, yeah, this is more or less what you get from an oil type finished fretboard. Let me get it at a few different angles so you can see. Okay, so that's where are we at here? Okay, we're from just above the 12th, yeah, so these, these five here. So that's what it looks like without the sheen on it. Oh, you're going to be so uncooperative. 
so uncooperative. But yeah, that's what, that's like two coats. That's just rosewood, and then key to red dye, and then two coats of baby oil, uh, not baby oil, mineral oil, sorry. And yeah, that's what you're looking at. And as you can see, as I come around on this side, you're getting a lot of sheen on that thing, a lot of sheen. I mean, it's like, looking at it from this side, I all I really see is sheen. I've got to get over to, like, here and get in my own light if I want to. Yeah, I just really have to be in my own light in order to get it without sheen. Let me try to move the light a little bit. That's a little better. Yeah, so that's wet. And that's what they're going to look like when they're dry. Right there, and then that's wet again. So yeah, it's really, really not bad. I mean, basically, this is this is all this is is just the prime ingredient, and in pretty much every fret oil out there, fretboard oil out there, from True Oil to well, no, True Oil's linseed based. Sorry, but yeah, everything except for maybe Fret Doctor is this stuff, more or less. Well, it's the prime ingredient. But anyway, enough of that. Let me hit pause and figure out where I'm at and things like that. I think I've already used up another 15 minutes. And I'm trying to keep these short. So also, i got to hit this up again. I'll be right back. Is this thing upside down? Anyway. Okay, be right back. Okay, I just took the uh, oil sponge and just took what was already on the neck and spray it around uniformly again, so and let it continue to soak and absorb oil. Over here, let's see how we're doing. Oh, might be dry. Yeah, that doesn't look bad. That doesn't look bad. There's a lot of sheen because of this light, but... But yeah, it's actually, it's not bad. It's pretty good. It's looking dark enough, I think. I mean, it's all flat. I've got a, this is like a... This thing is like the equivalent of a 350 watt, um bulb it's a big huge led thing it's the leds draw like 35 watts or something but yeah lots of lumens for very few watts but yeah this is looking good so let's do an unmasking oh uh, pretty chrome and what do we got under here can i do it this way really have fingernails. You cut your fingernails short so the dirt doesn't get under them when you're a hot rodder. I'm in general working on cars, so I've always had my fingernails trimmed short my whole life. Yep, tape took the oil, but... sides of the neck underneath the slot right there and right there okay let me uh let me grab my sponge well no wait let me leave this edge first oh yeah that looks okay that'll do that'll do there's just a hair of black on the top of the fretboard, but I'll bet you I can just do something like this. Yep, look at that. Look at that. That's what we want. That's what we want right there. Are you catching this? It's almost all off. Almost. Give me a bit of tissue.
And if this doesn't do it good enough, which I'm sure it will, you can always put a little naphtha on the tissue. So, yeah, it's not focusing good, but yeah, just, just a little bit there, a little bit there. Or, or, or. Got to get it into the light in order to see it. But yeah, I should get evidence of black coming off on this tissue. And yeah, this is coming out nicely. Having that oil on there first helps, keeps the paint from sticking. You can see that, or maybe you can't, you know, slightly red hue there from some dye mixing with the oil and coming up. And then over here, yeah, you got some slightly black stuff going on there. There it is, along with some of the red dye again. And yeah, but this cleaned up pretty nice. Maybe the trick is, is you just got to go slow so this thing will focus well. Give it a chance. Because I'm noticing it's like, you know, I'll go like this and it take a few seconds here to figure out what's going on. Okay, um, yeah, that's looking all right. It's, you know, not too... It looks a little dark on this side, but it's not really... Come on, focus again. There we go. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so this is looking all right. On the back side here, we get some light into that slot, maybe. Really hard to see. Come on, focus. Focus, focus. All right, guess you're gonna have to take my word for it. Yeah, that's pretty black. It's pretty black. Once again, this thing doesn't want to focus. Come on, focus on my thumb. Can you focus on my thumb? There you go. Okay, yeah, see, it's black in there. So yeah, we're looking good. All right, cool. I'll be back. Okay, spread the oil around again since I've been handling it and the tape pulled it off of this fret. And each time you do this, actually, this is going to redistribute the stuff from the more soaked frets to the less soaked frets. And, yeah, that'll kind of like, you know, help get it where you need it and not where you don't. And then, you've got some overrun here, probably. But, to tell you the truth, at this stage of the build, it's not really a big issue. If you look here see the slight discoloration there and here that's from the dye I believe and I haven't done anything about it it might just rub right off or something but I'll be dealing with that before the end God is in the details so okay so we've got it unmasked we've got it it's still kind of bright Maybe I should go for a gloss black down in there. Hmm. Be right back. Okay, so this thing says I'm already almost at 25 minutes on this video, so... I got the gloss black paint, but that's going to have to wait for the next video. Until then, everybody, have a good one. Didn't ever show you the back of this, did I? It's dirty, but it's pretty. Real pretty guitar.
yeah, look at this. I mean, like, all the cavities were pretty much all finished. I had to do... All I had to do was just hit it with, like... I think I hit it with a little bit of yellow up in this corner area here, and that was it. And everything else is... This is the way it came from the factory. I really lucked out. I pulled that pick guard off, and I was like, yes! So, there you go. Okay, see you guys all. See everybody, guys and girls, in the next one.